Welcome to the Coffee Kids and Crazy Podcast, a show about creating heart-to-heart connection with your kids. Your podcast hosts, Brittany Serpel and Seth Dahl, are here to answer your biggest parenting questions so that you can become a powerful parent. So get ready for Breakthrough as I welcome your hosts, Brittany and Seth. All right, Coffee Kids and Crazy, back at it again. Always having fun. Uh-huh. Always. I wish we could record all of our conversations in, in between. between. Yes. We just have fun in between our our takes and our things. And we're usually talking about our memes. Because we have so many memes. So but more memes than we actually have episodes. But we decided at the end. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a meme party for you. Yeah, we are going to have some fun. But this week's uh, or this month's topic of our podcast is really talking about the roles of fathers and mothers. And, and so, I mean, we could have pulled so many different memes, but yep. we thought, well. We like, have one right here. It's, we'll just go with this one. We'll go with this one. Like we do have a few that could work with we this, but one. this one. It's, it has to do with gender. So it that's totally why has to do with gender, with male, female, man, woman, father, mm-hmm, mother. Mm-hmm. Here's what it says. Me at gender reveals. This party should have been an email. <laughs> I have to say, I've never been to a gender reveal. I've never been to one either. And I kind of wonder if that's how I would feel. I'm prob- I'm excited for them. Yeah. But gender reveals was not a thing when we were having kids. No. I I I, I heard wasn't. about it after my children are. You get the young. news. You go to the thing. You get the ultrasound. You find out what you have. Then you tell your parents. Uh huh. And you tell your immediate family. You have to tell your parents. And first. then you post it on Facebook. Yep. Back then. That was a gender Maybe Instagram reveal. Ta-da. back then. But maybe it was a blue background. I don't even know if Instagram was around then. Green. And so yeah. But that was it. You didn't do like the little <laughs> Did you see the one video? The dad where he shoots himself? Shot himself in the stuff. Uh-huh. Trying to and reveal. She's gonna pee her pants. She's laughing uh-huh. so hard. Oh. I, I had a good That should have been an email. That one should have been an email because he now he's hurt. Wishing it was an email uh-huh. at that point because <laughs> he, all he's, he's gonna probably be... mad. Wife, you made me do this gender reveal party and now my gender is damaged. If you haven't seen that video, you, it's <laughs> floating around, but it is really funny. And oh, they're he has getting it ready, backwards. getting ready, twist, he can't get it, pop, it's... pow. All you see is I don't. Can you even see the color of the smoke? I don't know. I, I don't, don't remember. Know if you can. But the woman is holding a baby, and she um she says on camera, "I'm gonna be my pants." <laughs> She's laughing so hard. I love it. Look that oh. one up. It's not a meme, but it's, it's a good little video. Yeah, but we wanted to talk about um, the roles of fathers and mothers, and and I know that there are um, people out there that are. are Playing both roles, yeah, and um, and that's that's a hard reality for a lot of people. And so this is not to discredit or avoid yeah. you from having access to. This. I I fully believe that you know God is all about Absolutely. community, and so I've seen miracle after miracle of single parents um, being brought into a family that has a dynamic where that role is is filled by a spiritual father or mother or or aunt or uncle type of situation and you get to stay in your lane yes there's some double dipping for sure but um don't hear this as something we're trying to disqualify you we're just want to talk about the beauty yeah of those roles and their design the value of both of them yeah yeah. and yeah it is god's design to have a man and woman and we know Mm -hmm. that 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 has been messed with quite a bit and that is probably more so why we want to talk about it. And yeah. it has been messed with. From every angle. From every angle. If you follow the um, Kylo show, I'm on there with my dad. Mm-hmm. And we've talked a lot about the attack on family. Mm-hmm. That has been the agenda for a long time, but it's more obvious than ever. Yeah. It feels like. And it is very loud and it's frustrating to watch uh, unintentional partnership in the Christian walk here is that there's a lot of people that have been leaning into partnering with minimizing these roles or not protecting them. Um, and so we just want to talk about it. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we're doing today. Yeah. We might, we might offend you a little bit, but yeah, it's okay. if you love and trust us, our heart is, is to bring truth and, and ask you to just question some things and just lean in. Yeah. So. Enough of my, uh, that was the, uh, <laughs> the warning label. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what that was. One, um, one of the places that this has been messed with mm-hmm. is in the phrase or the words toxic masculinity, mm-hmm. toxic femininity, 
this this is one of the places where it's like boys being masculine mm -hmm. is toxic. Like I think I think it started out as kind of a good thing because I I just looked it up to get a little bit more clarity on it, but I think it people started to realize that it wasn't healthy to teach boys to suppress their emotions. And that's where it started. Like, that's actually good. Like, hey, boys, should not suppress your emotions. Hey, mm -hmm. boys. Yeah. It's uh, okay talk to cry. About, it's okay it's to okay. cry. Yep. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to need comfort. It's okay to give hugs and receive hugs. It's okay. Like, we realized that, but then it turned into this men can't be strong anymore. Men can't be powerful anymore. Men can't protect anymore because mm -hmm. men have to fully just. So I think what started out as something that could be very helpful mm -hmm. has has turned quite not yeah. helpful. And the other side of that is the whole toxic femininity stuff where it's like trying to change men so much that that actually – trying to – I don't know how I'm trying to say this. Well, let me speak to the lady part. Yeah, you would speak to this part. In my mind, we have tried to demasculin, demasculate men, and in that we have a void. So we're, we're trying to make women equal. Yeah. Well, I laugh and think of – if I tell Lincoln right now to do push-ups – I think him and Delaney could do about the same. Yeah. And she's how many years older <laughs> she's than him? She's 16. Yeah. And one is he's doing training. He's used to it. But his, his body structure is yep. different. Now, we'll put Lincoln at 16 and Delaney at 16. Yes, I think he's going to definitely out. Crush her. Yeah. Yeah. I look at Ben and I chopping wood. My approach to chopping wood would look like, I'll give this a go. I'll give it a try. I'm willing to do yeah. almost anything. But... I'm probably going to just go buy it from some dude that loves doing this and has a ton of it. And that's yeah. me chopping wood. Yeah. But Ben's out and there. And have it delivered and stacked on uh -huh. your front porch exactly. ready to go. I, and not that men aren't capable of it, but I would not be able to, if you put me out there for five hours and Ben out there for five hours, our piles would be drastically different. Yeah. And it has to do with, I can't actually compete with Ben. I'm not a man. I don't have the strength that he has. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah. So what we've tried to do is move our girls to being tough. And to in an attempt to empower women because women were suppressed for so yes. long. and held in. So like we need to empower women. And in order to do that, we have to change men, adjust men, squash men, and make women like men and men like women. Which when you try and make one like the other, you lose one. Yeah. So there is no equal it's we're trying to suffocate one or suffocate one. Yeah. So we need to remember that they're equal. They're they're different. Yeah. They're never going to be the same. They're equal. Then we need to to rise up our men to be our boys to be men and our girls to be women. Yeah. And we've talked about this before. Um, you know, where men are formed, ben, women are born, mm -hmm. and there's just this design in us and it's a beautiful design yep. and and i think that that's what we need to remember and embrace and help keep rising up and give permission to happen yep. instead of be afraid of this and another place where i think um that the view and roles of men and women fathers and mothers specifically fathers and mothers is uh, in the tv world mm -hmm. we've done a horrible job of um keeping value for the family yeah and how, how you keep value for the family is not defined by the children where all these shows are oh they feel centered around the children rather than around the family yeah and that's one of the places where we put on display that our kids consume that our kids see as what's supposed to be normal is what hollywood or whoever is teaching this is this is the value of family is around you children, not around the whole family. Yeah, which mothers and fathers are leading. You know, it's interesting talking about TV. At the time of this recording, right now, it's just recently come out that China has decided that they will no longer show on television feminine men. Hmm. They're only going to show powerful men, strong men, 
They're changing the way they do their military. They're changing what they show on TV because they want their men. They realize that it's important to have men that are manly mm -hmm. and strong and, and masculine. And so they're, they're, they've made it illegal to show on TV because that's what tells everyone what's normal. That's what tells well, everyone this what's is, This is the influencer. Healthy. TV is yeah, the influencer. Yeah, TV is the influencer. Yeah. And so they've changed it where we've got all these shows and stuff that are communicating fathers aren't smart, or fathers there. aren't there, mm -hmm. it, this is totally normal, it surrounds the kids, not the whole family mm -hmm. as a whole, and so it's just interesting that what's happening on TV mm -hmm. is really affecting us. And I, I've noticed a couple times, so there's the movie um, Boss Baby 2 mm -hmm. has come out not that long ago, as well as a movie called Mitchells vs. the Machines. And in Mitchell's vs. Machines, at first, the dad is like this. They kind of, you know, he likes the outdoors. He has everyone carry this certain screwdriver that's the most weird screwdriver. But they make the dad kind of look like you're this old school conservative. You don't want the new car. You want old trusty, old sturdy car. You, you. They date him as a. Uh Unable to evolve or to... Yeah, unable to change, mm -hmm. unable to evolve. But f fast forward all the way to the end of the movie, and the only thing that saves humanity is the screwdriver that he made everyone carry in their pocket <laughs> all the Army time. <laughs> and they discover that his role, they didn't. They had diminished his role. They had thought he was foolish. They had thought the stuff that he loved and cared about didn't really matter in today's society until it comes down to it. And it's like... If they didn't have that old sturdy car that he s was determined to keep, mm -hmm. and if they didn't have the screwdrivers in their pocket, all of humanity would be completely gone. And so at the end of the movie, you realize, for one, you realize the importance of the family staying connected, but it shows the importance of the father mm -hmm. role. Even though you think these guys aren't evolving, this is, you should change, you should become more soft, you shouldn't carry a screwdriver in your pocket, mm -hmm. da, da da No, that's exactly what we need. Okay. Then in Boss Baby 2, the two heroes that actually make the thing work is the dad and his brother. And they they are the ones that infiltrate the school system trying to destroy the family. The school is. The school is trying yeah. to destroy the family. It's loud and clear in the movie. But it's the dad and his brother that actually stop it. Mm -hmm. Of course, they reconnect with the daughter. Mm -hmm. They reconnect Great. as a whole family. So it's a picture of... The fathers finding their place again, the men finding their place in both movies, the men finding their place, the family realizing how important this is and coming back together. So it's the power of men mm -hmm. and the family as a whole that saves the world. Yeah. In both movies. I, I, it's the, in those, I've only seen one of them. I've only seen the Boss Baby 2 one. But I, I, in the beginning, the dad is insecure of his role in his daughter. Yeah. He's getting pushback from her. Distance he's, from her. He's getting distance from her. And instead of engaging and fighting for it, he's trying to give her space because he's trying to be respectful. But it's just making it worse and worse and worse because what you find out later is that she started to believe that he didn't want yeah. something from her. And so this is exactly what the devil loves to do is yeah. to create chaos and to create confusion. But in this um, movie, you watch as the progresses is the dad regains his confidence and his role mm -hmm. and is able to re-engage and saves and she re-engages with him yep. they, they discover they take, their, down, they they take dis down the bad school. they take down the bad school yep. save the family and all the other families mm -hmm. in the city yeah did you know that Brittany co-hosts another podcast with danny silk it's called the kylo show and it's a podcast about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. Listen to The Kylo Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. Go watch or listen to The Kylo Show today. The, the role of uh, mothers and fathers, they're very different. I would say my role naturally with me being a woman and then me my makeup of things, I'm really good at the organization. I'm really good at the attentive emotional state going on in the, in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, a different intuitive 
I don't know, I, I don't, dial, if you will, of something needs to be leaned in. And sometimes I go in and do it. And sometimes I t- say, Ben, I, this is one I need you to do because there's something on him yep. that's different than what I have. And looking at, um, we talked before in the beginning of the series, uh, just about sex and porn and culture and the role a mom has in influencing yep. um, how a son views his 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 sexual pursuit in whether he's going to give permission to certain things, whether he's going to pursue them because there's clarity on the impact of their relationship because mom's been willing to talk about yeah. it. Um, one of the things she talks about, she interviews a couple men that are 30, 40s and 50s. And they all say, if my mother would have told me how this would have impacted her, I would have viewed it differently. Yeah. And one of them, his mom did. And he, it, drastically changed how he uh, his his ability to be promiscuous or not yeah. was always the voice of his mom not out of shame but out of wanting to protect their relationship because yeah, it was he strong loves his mom and and so that's the knowing the role that you have in each you know my son Lincoln is very different than my girls yeah and so but what I'm bringing as a mom is this emotional sensitivity and this organizational skill and I I'm a good multitasker. I would say Ben is not yeah. naturally. Yeah. And that's I don't know that it's a male thing as much as it is female. I know not lots of guys that are good at this. But that's one I've known my gender roles as a mother and I've known my natural strength roles. Yes. And I love that because I think what what's happened partly in society as we said um because of your gender, you're supposed to be this exact certain mm-hmm. way. And because you have different strengths, you know, it's like the kid, the, the boy that's like s- real sensitive. It's like, that's not actually bad. Yeah. And so, But we've gone, oh, that doesn't fit your gender role because you're sensitive, you're kind, you're loving, yeah. Yeah. you're gentle. And so, you you know, we've gone so far as to say, I mean, well, now you, now you mm-hmm. must not be a man. Yeah. Like, well, we say gender is a construct, but then we say, oh, you don't fit that construct, so you must be something else. No. Mm-hmm. It's you have different strengths. We have different roles, but we also have different strengths, and our strengths can really help us yeah. in this. Like uh, speaking of strengths with me and Lauren, it's like I know a lot of men who think it's their job because they're the man to manage the money and take care of the money and 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 mm-hmm. have all the that details and be in control of the money. <laughs> like you're supposed to because yeah. that's what society has that's told you men do. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'm smart enough to know if I were to do that in our family. I would limit our I would limit Lauren down to my weakness. Mm-hmm. But oh, if I good. but if I can uh, can understand that this is actually the detail orient the the focus on detail, paying attention to detail, knowing every single penny and cent, that is her strength. She is a math nerd. She loves yeah. math. I don't. I'm like, <laughs> let me wrestle the kids, you do the <laughs> math and let's talk about it, show me yeah. and we'll figure this out. But like or if, you'd handle the technology because you're so good at that. Yeah. And Lauren's like, I, I don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But we, you know, we're not going, it's my role as a man to do the money. Mm-hmm. Like, no, it's your strength to do the money. Why would I limit you mm-hmm. to my weakness instead of me just step into your strength mm-hmm. all because I think it's my job mm-hmm. rather than realize this is your strength. Mm-hmm. And so she manages all our money. Like, and it would be foolish for me to do it any other way because I'm a man. I'm supposed to do that. No, this is your strength. This is who you are. And so we have, you know, there's times like, okay, I mow the grass. I totally mow the grass because that's my my job. But she's out there milking the cow every day because she loves her cow. Mm-hmm. And I milk it when you have to. When I have to. But <laughs> Or the but bees. She's out there wrestling the bees. She's out there doing the bees. <laughs> you don't oh, like the bees. <laughs> no, I don't like the bees. They stung me 10 times on the head and I don't like the bees anymore. But... But that whole thing of like, what's our strengths? Who are we? Who are we as an individual? Who are we as a couple? Who are we? We're just like, wow, I may do some things that would typically be considered a woman's job, but Lauren might do some things that are typically considered a man's job, but it's because we understand our strengths and we want to be as powerful as possible, as as healthy as possible. And I'm not going to make you come down to my level in a certain area mm-hmm. because I think it's my job to do that. Yeah, I'm going to let you do it. And that's the the beauty of when you're confident and know your identity and your gender roles, and there's permission to 
activate your roles that you have that are your strengths. That's that's where I feel like the the family dynamic gets to just go to a new level. It gets to and have increase because the leaders of the culture are actually operating where they should be. Yes. And it's kind of, uh, if you think of the fivefold ministry, mm-hmm. if you've got a pastor and an evangelist job role, yeah. it, it's okay, it, but it's probably not as good as if you, you had an, an evangelist, evangelist there. An evangelist job. If yeah. you have, um, you know, a teacher in the pastor's position, it, it'll work, yeah. but your people might be desperate for something different. Yeah. So things can work, and a lot of the, the dynamics of a home do, but what could happen if you put the right people in the right spot and then yeah. you owned your identity of what you're supposed to be doing? Yeah. I remember when we changed um, the finances, and I Ben, he was instructed by a, a leader that we love and said, you need to do the finances. So Ben took it over. I remember... He missed, it was very, very early. We didn't even have kids early in our marriage. He miscalculated and we lost like $1,500 in the checkbook. And he says, I don't care what they say. I shouldn't have this job. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm so glad that we came to this place where let's stay in our lanes of strength yeah. and let's gain. And I think becoming a, a mother and growing as a mother, there's more and more identity that I learn of what's my role and reading good books that help me unlock potential. Yeah. I think that's that's the beauty of being able to get gain more and more confidence of what's my gender role in this home as a mother. Because I my strength, I, I've been practicing for a long time, but my gender role and the change of, you know, 16-year-old daughter and a 9-year-old son – all the things that are coming with a nine-year-old son and his relationship with his penis, I will tell you, yes. is growing. It is is real. It's real. He's it's discovering it. Wand. And I am looking at this these situations going, okay, hi, what is my role? What is my role? Because I, I don't want to freak out, but at the same time, I need to know what my role is. Oh, good. Ben. Ben. You're you up. <laughs> you talk here. I love being able to tag team. And then do the same thing when, you know, the girls are on their period. And he's like, uh, Brittany, yeah, Brittany, Brittany, it's yours. your turn. You so got this one. This is the beauty of knowing your lane. Um, and, and knowing your strengths and yeah. your personality, all of the stuff, you know, whether it's Enneagram, whether it's DISC, whether mm-hmm. it's Strength Finders, all these things can be really helpful yeah. as well to learn those love languages. All, all of it all of are it. very much like... Oh, Lauren's love language is acts of service. So for mom to be super crazy snuggly all the time isn't isn't necessarily what yeah. what what she needs or what she's gonna do. But dad's really good at it. Oh yeah. So snuggle away. I'll snuggle all day with those children. Yep. Um okay, so strengths, strength roles, not just gender roles, mm-hmm. but understanding all of that's super good. And we've talked about like some of the movies that are kind of saying some certain stuff and and what's on TV and China and all the things that are being shown to our kids and all this. But you guys have recently started watching an older show mm-hmm. from way back. Way back from when I was a kid. Yeah. Right? So, like so way a, back. Then. A show that you watched as a child, I watched as a child called Boy Meets World. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of wrecking you guys, right? It is. Um, With like, this area of well, men, women. And, and family yeah. and culture. Because it's something we talk about a lot Um and we're always trying to find a do a movie night together or do watch a show together. I mean, we're always trying to do something that's bringing us together that we can all enjoy. You know, we've got all these different age groups going on. Well, I we we're looking through our options and we come across Boy Meets World, and I start laughing because I was filming Ben. Like, do you remember Corey and Topanga? You know, we're just laughing through this and. Um, we did, the kids are like just entertain us just just watch it because they've seen I think they remade Girl Meets World mm-hmm. it's just a newer one that came out in the last couple years and so we we start watching this and within the first episode we've paused it probably two times to stop and talk about what's happening which what's on display is this TV show of a family of five that has value for the mother has value for the father has value for their marriage that they are uh romantically 
pursuing each other and it's obvious on screen. Yeah. No one's dippy or dopey or anything weird like that. No one's flirting with the neighbor. I mean, there's none of that stuff going on. Yeah. And then all the, the children, all their different roles, they're, they're like normal siblings. They're very different interests, very different strengths, kind of bigger and, you know, they're, the they're kids. Yeah. They're normal. And then they're in a school setting and there's a principal and um, Mr. Feeney. And uh, so there, it's just a normal school dynamic and, and regular life. But what we're watching is, you know, I can name off so many different shows that my kids have watched that I've watched with them that the parents are are silly. They're goofy. They are immature. They lack wisdom. They lack an ability to lead or have anything intelligent come out. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that is attractive is how awesome the kids are, but they're disrespectful to each other all the time and to their parents. Their yeah. parents are, are too dumb to carry out a thought. Yeah. And somehow they're running the family. Yeah. And or or there's a the roles where there's just a single mother. Those are there's a lot of shows out there where it's just a single mom, and her role has become to be the friend rather than the mother. Yeah. Because that's how I have influence. Is if I can lower the expectation of me being a leader in your life to me being an equal, and maybe then I can influence you there. Yeah. Um, or they have the bum dad and the mom. Yeah. So it's almost like so this is the dynamic that we're used to. Yeah. So we stopped this show so many times. And we ask the kids, what's different about this show than some other shows we reference? And they said, they all love each other. Wow. I said, yeah, it's pretty obvious. And Lincoln says, the dad's not dumb. That was one of the He said that. He said that, which we were laughing at. Okay, yes, exactly. So we've been watching this. um, We just started season two. And sure, it's Hollywood. So there's still pieces in there that are not necessarily what I would agree with, but I will say hands down, it's been a great show to watch with all of us together. Um, and we get to stop like you do with movies. Yeah, pause the movie, pause the show. And we talk and... through what's going on. Um, they had one show or one episode. I don't know exactly where it was, but they, in the beginning of the show, they talk about who they want their dad to be. And Corey says, I'd want Superman as my dad. Uh, I wish Superman could be my dad. That's, I think, what he says. And the episode goes on where Corey makes a mistake. He rushes through a job. He creates more work for himself by accidentally, like, painting the neighbor since the wrong color. Yeah. He's trying to get money to get a, a super soaker. Do you remember those? Uh, oh, um, yeah. And trying to go, and he can't go until he finishes, and he's mad at his dad, and he's the bad guy. And, and his mom says, no one's the bad guy here. And she's just talking about being responsible for your actions. Yeah. And so it's confronting this whole victim mentality that there's nobody the bad guy. Think about everyone that's affected. And so the dad goes and lets Corey go early, and he gets his gun. They, he goes to this ep- epic water fight battle, and he comes so that by the end of the show, he comes home, and his brother, who works at the grocery store where his dad works, is exhausted. Yeah. And can't function. He can't. He did move. a half a shift and he's fried. Yeah. He's like, I can't understand how dad does this. Mm-hmm. And he goes on to say, he stands for 12 hours. He takes his lunch standing up and then he comes home and is a dad. I don't know how he does it. And Corey's at the window and he's seen his dad finishing the job that he started or that he created a mess of. And his dad's covering him. Yeah. Um, letting his son, you know, go and uh, participate in, in the whatever water fight he was at, he looks out the window and says, no, that's because dad's Superman. And so it's just as there is such value for the whole family in the show. And, and so it just reaffirms kind of our value for the yeah. whole family. Which is what we're really trying to get to, I think, yeah. in this is moms are valuable. Yes. Dads are valuable. Yes. Boys becoming men are valuable. Girls becoming women, it's valuable. Everyone has their role. Everyone has their strengths. This show has kind of re... Well, it's shown you... It's just actually... The stuff that we, yeah. we're we being fed mm-hmm. is to devalue... Family. The family and the roles. And this show is to just go back to the 80s. And you're like, it's wow. It's not even that far. I think it went 90s. all the way into 2003 or something going. like that. Show, it's, yeah. It's got seven seasons. We are only in... 
just started season two. But the difference in what we're shown and what we're communicating, there, what's being communicated to us and to our kids, and that's where we wanted to get back to with this whole conversation. I know we've been a little bit in different areas and talking about stuff, but everyone, everyone in the family is really, really valuable. Everyone has a place, and f- having that in our hearts, mm-hmm. having that go on in our homes – we need it again. Yeah. I, I think there's some great resources out there to helping us unlock the potential that we have in our personal roles as, as mothers and fathers. And so to pursue those would be what I would recommend. Yeah. Um, have maybe a conversation with your spouse of, are we operating in our strengths? In our strengths, yeah. Are, are we our gifts? Are we stuck in what the world says we should be, or what tradition says we should be? Are we? That's it. Are we confused in what the world is trying to tell us? Yeah. Um, and what are we going to do? I totally forgot till just now saying this. Ben and I last night in the hot tub had this whole conversation, <laughs> and I said, Ben, I'm, I, I'm homeschooling my kids right now. Like yeah. I'm the stay-at-home dad homeschooling my children, and typically we think. The mom's supposed to do that. The mom's the homeschooler. Dad doesn't do that. Like, dad goes to work. Mom mm-hmm. stays home and schools the children and does all this stuff. And, like, I absolutely love it. Like, Lauren started her business. It's growing. She's doing all this stuff. Like, I need to actually protect that for her. Like, I want my wife's business to succeed. She needs to have time for that. So I will homeschool the children. Mm-hmm. I will rearrange my whole entire life. Two ministries I'll rearrange so that I'm free to be home with my kids. And I absolutely love it. I'm like... Yeah. I'm a stay-at-home. I do have two ministries that are happening. Yeah. But I'm also a stay-at-home dad that's teaching math and spelling and doing speech therapy with our son. And we're going on little field trips and doing so. I love it. I'm like, I'm pouring my life into my kids. But typically that would be a mom role. And mm-hmm. Ben even said, he's like, yeah, when we first moved here, yeah. I was doing school. So I did two years. I was a stay-at-home dad. I'm like. He potty trained Lincoln. Yeah. But he's a stay-at-home dad. I'm, I've been a stay-at-home dad. I was like, wow, don't get locked into – I mean, we need to appreciate the roles that mm-hmm. men and women have. We need to revalue those things. Of like, it's okay to have men that are strong and, and work hard and do all this and, and are emotionally sensitive at the same time. But also, what's our strengths? Who mm-hmm. are we as individuals? And what, what do we need in this season as well yeah. that's like, okay, I'm going to be a stay-at-home dad. Ben was a stay-at-home dad. Now you're doing homeschool. Yeah. I, and, and he's not. He's, he's he's sharing with me some of the things so I can be here and do different stuff. But I think even seasons, uh, they adjust our our time together. And so being aware of, okay, the season you're in right now, the strength that you have, you're going to lend to Lauren. Yeah. And you're going to cover the, the strength that she has and providing for the family maybe in a way that she hasn't before yeah. or it's growing, yeah. uh, which is typically your job. And yeah. But you're leaning in. And, and so the adjustments that need, need to be made, I mean, that's what I'd be looking at is our, do, when it gets hard, that's usually when Ben and I are looking at each other, what adjustments have to be made? Because mm-hmm. we are we are going upstream and it's not working. Yeah. What do we need to do? Do we need to build a boat? Do we need to find a bridge? Do we need to get out of this water? Do we need to turn around? I mean, paying attention yep. so that we get to stay in the roles that we were created to have as male and female and then get to operate in the strengths that we were given by God. Yeah. So... I love it. Yes. All right. Well, we'll go do it. Go do go it. Go figure it out. Reevaluate. Look at your stuff. And hopefully you get to upgrade. And watch Boy Meets World. <laughs> sure. I need to go I, watch I liked Boy it. Meets World. It was fun. I, I mean, I will say it's still a secular show, so don't be shocked when yep. <laughs> it, it throws that do out there. Do not be shocked. Yeah. All right. Well, we love you guys. Yes, we believe we in you. And we'll we love having time you with you. See you soon. Yep. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of the Coffee Kids and Crazy podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch it on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time.